Welcome back to another episode of Warren Cali. In this episode, I'm going to talk about Joseph James D'Angelo Jr., also known as many names like the Visalia Ransacker, the Night Stalker, and the Golden State Killer. Joseph was born on November 8, 1945. Joseph had four siblings and grew up in an army family, so he moved a lot and witnessed a lot growing up, like seeing his sister being violated by two men when he was only seven years old. He was also constantly abused and mentally and physically by his dad. In his teenage years, Joseph's family was settled in Folsom, California, just outside of Sacramento, where he would go to middle school and high school in that area. Joseph joined the U.S. Navy in 1964. He served for 22 months during the Vietnam War as a damage control man. Beginning in August of 1968, Joseph attended Sierra College in Rockland, California. He graduated with an associate degree in police science with honors. He then attended Sacramento State University in 1971, where he earned a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. Joseph later took post-grad courses and further police training at the College of Sequoias. Joseph then completed a 32-week police internship at the police department of Roseville. From May 1973 to August of 1976, Joseph worked as a burglary unit police officer. But the whole time, Joseph was a police officer he was the one causing the crime. From 1973 to 1976, Joseph did over 120 robberies and one murder in 1975. Joseph broke into a home of a journalist named Claude and tried to kidnap his daughter. This led to a scuffle which Joseph shot Claude and killed him. He fled the scene and wasn't identified at the time because he had a mask on. Nobody knew Joseph to be living this double life. He was a police officer and a husband, which he married his wife in 1973 and they had three kids but his crimes will only get worse from then on. From 1976 to 1979, Joseph violated over 50 women from different cities like Sacramento, San Jose, Modesto, Stockton, Fremont, and Walnut Creek, just to name a few. In 1977 to 1978, Joseph started to tempt the police department about the crimes he was committing, saying he was going to strike some more and even harm more people. He made over seven phone calls during that time to the police departments, and even sent the Sacramento Bee newspaper notes about his plans and the locations where he did the crimes. July 1979, Joseph was arrested for shoplifting a hammer and bug repellent. He was sentenced to six months of probation and was fired out October from the police department. During the process of being fired, Joseph threatened to kill the chief of police and allegedly stalked the chief's house. This later led to Joseph's murder spree. From 1979 to 1986, Joseph killed over seven victims mainly women in gruesome ways. Joseph's brother-in-law claimed that Joseph would casually bring up the crimes in conversations around the time of the original crimes. Neighbors reported that he frequently engaged in loud outbursts, and one neighbor reported that his family received a phone call from Joseph, threatening to deliver a load of death because their dog was barking. Most of the late 80s and 90s, Joseph remained quiet besides a few threatening phone calls to the police he made. It wouldn't be until 2001 when most of these crimes were connected to one person. With most of these crimes being from different cities all throughout California, it was never pinned to one person, but it would take over a decade for more clues to come. On June 15, 2016, the FBI released further information relating to the crimes, including new sketches and new crime details, and a 50,000 reward was also announced. Eventually, through the use of genetic genealogy searching, investigators identified distant relatives of Joseph, including family members directly relating back to his great-great-great-grandfather dating back to the 1800s. Based on this information, investigators built about 25 different family trees that led to Joseph alone. Identification of Joseph began in December in 2017 when officials led by detectives uploaded the killer's DNA to a profile. The website identified 10 to 20 people who had the same great-great-grandparents as the Golden State Killer being Joseph. On April 18, 2018, a DNA sample was collected from the door handle of Joseph's car. Another sample was later collected from a tissue found in Joseph's garbage can. Both were matches to the samples associated with the Golden State Killer crimes. April 24, 2018, Sacramento County Sheriff's deputies arrested Joseph. He was charged with over eight crimes. On May 10th, the Santa Barbara County District Attorney's Office charged Joseph with four additional counts. In his confession, Joseph says someone in his head named Jerry made him do everything he did. Joseph could not be charged with violating a woman or the burglaries because the statute of limitations had expired, but he was charged with 13 counts of murder and 13 counts of kidnapping. On June 29, 
2020 as a part of a plea bargain to avoid death penalty, Joseph pled guilty to 13 counts of first degree. On August 21st, 2020, Joseph received multiple consecutive life sentences without the possibility of parole. After listening to victim impact statements, Joseph would say, I listened to all your statements, each and one of them, and I'm truly sorry to everyone I hurt. Joseph committed most of his offenses while he was married and raising a family. Neither his wife nor his kids ever suspected he was committing serious crimes. His eldest daughter thought the whole time she had a perfect dad, while his wife believed the reasons why he was away most of the time. His wife filed a divorce from him in 2019. Joseph is now 77 and serving his life sentence in PC at Corcoran. This will conclude this episode. If you haven't already, make sure you check out my previous episodes. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.